Welcome to Cusco, a city filled with history, culture, and stunning landscapes. In this 48 hour adventure, we are going to take you through the heart of the Andes and discover everything that this stunning city has to offer, including tasting a variety of local Peruvian foods. And later in this vlog, we're even gonna take a stab at cooking a traditional Peruvian meal ourselves. Oh my God. How many we cook this? We made this meal. Oh my god, well done. Join us on this adventure and unlock the secrets of this ancient city. Don't forget to subscribe and follow along for more travel tips. So we're starting our 48 hours in Cusco with a local breakfast. We were hoping to get something sweet, but we always see everybody eating these sandwiches for breakfast. And we also got a quinoa drink which honestly tastes like apple pie. It's so good. The sandwiches we haven't tried yet, this one just looks like an omelette sandwich, which is so good. Three sol for all of this. It's an omelette sandwich. Yeah. It's perfect breakfast. Super simple, it's just an omelette, but it's filled with chives, I think. It's really salty, really flavorful, and then the sweet quinoa drink is perfect. Three sol. How have we not discovered this already? So we ended up buying three sandwiches in total plus the quinoa drink and our total cost was seven sol. It's not a big breakfast, but it's enough to satisfy us. And we're hoping throughout this vlog, we're gonna be finding a lot of local food that we haven't yet been able to try during our time here in Peru. So we don't wanna to eat too much for breakfast. Hopefully this will be sort of like a 48 hours in Cusco plus uh, trying all the local food that we can. Right now we're on our way to the Curicancha slash Santa Domingo Church and we're walking down like the main road and it's so beautiful. It's got a cute little lamppost and the street signs, even the street lights are like colonial so style. Well yeah. They've done good. popular as you can see behind me Santo Domingo Church so the reason this church is so uh, historically relevant in Cusco is because actually this on this site was where the Coricancha temple once resided which was an Incan temple and Coricancha actually means gold temple if you translate it from Quechua which is the original language and you can still see some of the structures still remain but when they were conquered by the Spaniards um, they actually took most of the stone and built this Christian church called Santo Domingo on top of it they also stole all of the gold which apparently was a lot it is a beautiful church absolutely stunning and it's pretty cool that you can still see some of the like Incan ruins right here in the city. It's only 15 sol to enter and they have a whole wall of information explaining the history and what everything means and kind of how it all went down. But oh, I love seeing the Incan architecture because the stone, look at them. They're so perfectly lined up. And you'll see some gaps in stones in places, but apparently most of those gaps have been caused by earthquakes. We did also get offered as we were walking in from a tour guide. He started off at 50 souls per person. And I think if we said no a few times and then he offered 20 souls per person. So you can definitely bargain your way down. Reading the information is enough for us anyway. I don't think you need uh, a tour guide to enjoy this because there's already so much information about it. Save your money. We do have a plan to go up to a viewpoint of Cusco later on, maybe for sunset if the skies stay as clear as they are, but this is not too bad. The way Cusco, the original way Cusco was built by Inca, it was built in the shape of a puma. Really? Look, yeah, so if you look at it from above, I don't know if now structure would be easy to pick up, but originally it was the shape of a puma. That is so cool, I didn't know that. Oh, 
the little amigos. sheep. They're so cute. <laughs> okay, now let's go. We're going to try and find some more local food to eat, and we know just <laughs> the spot. We've made our way to the San Pedro Central Market. There is a main building inside, but outside, I think this is just because of the new year, but there are so many markets selling clothes and a lot of them selling yellow underwear, which I think has something to do with like the new year. I guess you wear yellow, brings you good luck. But we are trying to go inside to the main area so we can try some more local Peruvian food. Souls to choose from, but there's a couple of things we really want to try. So we're gonna see if we can go find them. Hola. So Jacqueline made a list of the things she wanted to try, which are Peruvian traditional food. It's stuff we haven't tried yet since we've been here. So we just bought one portion, but it's like a meal, so you still get a starter. This is like a, I guess, a menu of the day. We were hoping just to get the dish, because there's a, quite a few things on my list that I still want to try. Usually, when you order lunch in Peru, you get an entree, which is mostly a soup, and then you get your main dish, and you usually get a drink with it as well. So also, this restaurant is really busy, like there's a lot of people eating here, so that's always a good sign. Very strong. It's like, I think it's a mutton broth. Very, Very salty as well. But good. It's good. It's just strong and salty. Ah, wow, si, sí, gracias. Wow. Mm. So the dish that we wanted to try is ati de gallina. So this one is a creamy, spicy chicken made with peppers and comes with rice. There's also some olives in there as well and an egg. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, it looks really good. Oh my god, the flavors are so nice. It's like capsicum, pepper, creamy. Oh my god. Our chicken is so tender. There's like lots of spices and pepper flavor in there, but it's also kind of sweet. Oh yeah, also the olives in Peru, they do, they do good olives. After we've had some food, we'll show you around San Pedro Market as well. <laughs> but we gotta eat first. For example, is another meal of the day for seven sol, less than half what we just paid. And we even saw one other uh, little market stall was doing a vegetarian menu del dia. So vegetarians can eat here too, and it was falafel. Papa la huancaina. Es papa cocida con salsa la huancaina. Es una salsa hecha de ají amarillo. I'm so excited. So, we couldn't find the options we were looking for, so we came to the vegetarian option just to get some more food. And their entree for their menu del dia today is papas a la huancana, which is one of the foods I really wanted to try today. Basically, this one is potatoes with a sauce made out of, I believe, it's peppers, like uh, capsicums and cheese. Looks a lot the same color as that one. Kind of looks the same as the ati de gallina that we just had. I know I'm pronouncing all of this food wrong and I apologize, but I'm trying my best. Mmm, it's cold. It's just a slice of potato, but the sauce, you don't really taste the cheese. If you told me you didn't say there was cheese, I wouldn't have known. It's so hearty and like uh, comfort food, but it's a super creamy, really thick sauce. I can taste the cheese in there. 
Oh, peanuts, yes. It's got like a peanut flavor too. It's really good. So this menu of the day is just 10 so half what we just paid. We definitely went to the most expensive place, but now you know. What a dish. 10 so guys. I think that might be the biggest portion we've gotten our whole time in Peru. It looks like Lomo Soltado, which is a stir fry, Peruvian stir fry, but that's usually made with beef. But it looks like they've done a vegetarian version of that. There's some sort of like falafel lentil patty on top, and some papas fritas. Very Asian. Yeah. Very like soy sauce at the bottom. The broccoli is so tender. It's like you don't even chew it, just melt in your mouth. And it's so good to cook it. Mm, so good. Delicious. I love Peru. All the food that we've had in Peru has been good. Fun fact, Peru has over 4,000 varieties of potatoes. Hola. When a cafe comes in, uno, uno cafe. Sim. Cafe negro. Para cafe negro. Gracias. Usted lo pone esencia. Más. Me gusta cargadito. Sí. Ya. Échelo. Ahí. Todo. Todo. Mucho energy. Gracias. So this is the first time we've ever seen coffee like this when we go to Peru. Oh, sugar, puede ponerlo. Oh. Ah, no. No sugar. <laughs> no so, milk, no sugar. In Peru, they make a liquid coffee and then they give you hot water and you add your coffee, desired strength. Sometimes they do it for you, but usually when they do it for you, it's quite weak. So that's we why we can't coffee. We are still in the San Pedro market. I don't know if you realize, because I think we've been here for a while and we haven't even left the food section. Fine. Oh, Ooh, gracias. Gracias. Wow, we got some cake. Because why not? Because we are exploring Cusco, we're exploring the food as well. Okay, so my coffee was free soul, Jacqueline's was free 50. And, and look how giant it is, it's, oh my god. And the cake is 250. Nine soul for dessert. So nice when we're sitting down, we saw each section has a type of food. So one was ceviche, one was this, one, one was pollo. And here is like only coffee section, so it's a bit more calm. Okay, so now we can explore the rest of the market, the other half. Now that we've eaten our weight in food. Yeah, the food behind, the shopping this side. Everything's made of alpaca wool and it's so soft. I don't want to buy one, like a jump ball. But also, we only have so much space in our bag. I don't know. It smells really good, but it's like a flavored smoke. And they have all these different versions of them. For those that haven't seen, we did the Salcante trick, which is the big trick that you can do to reach Machu Picchu. And we came to this market and we bought dried fruit and nuts. And that's another amazing thing you can find here. A very affordable price and it's also in that very same market. So you get a lot of things here in this market. And tiny little bottles of Pisco. And this is actually the Pisco that we tried when we went to Huacachina and we went to the uh, La Carabedo uh, distillery. And this is their like best Pisco. It's the oldest distillery in America. So like the oldest alcohol maker in America. bread aisle and it smells so good here and they have these gigantic loaves of bread I don't know again because it's Christmas time if there's like a particular reason for having such big loaves of bread or if it's just normal but they look amazing the dried fruits are all five sold per 100 grams and the little 
chocolate things are only four sold per 100 grams. So less than two dollars per 100 grams, which is pretty good. Go for it. This is so unlike Max. Usually he never lets us have this much. And there's one more chocolate thing we have to show you as well. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for it. But oh my God, it's so good. So we got 100 grams of sweetened pineapple, dried. 100 grams of cocoa, I think like it will work well, some stage and two different chocolates. One has like a beer inside and that one just tastes good that on the west side. <laughs> Gracias. On each? Yeah. Gracias. Buen dia. Okay, we tried these chocolates. The ones that we tried were homemade ones in Lima when we did our food tour. So we'll put a link to that one. I don't know if these ones are homemade, but if they're anything like the ones we ate in Lima, oh. Oh my god, we might need more than one each. But two sol is just one decent sized piece. So it's not cheap, but... Something else we had on our hike and we tried in Lima. It's like those little nut sweet caramelized bar. For hikes it's perfect, for tea it's terrible. Really yummy. Hola. So they call these, well they call it on our food tour, the Peruvian Snickers because it's like a like a nougaty taste like they have inside the Snickers bar but obviously without the chocolate. Not In the Lima price. they were only one sold each so I think we might be getting tourist prices here. So just to give you an idea, basically we walk all the way from the back end all the way down there to the other end of the market and at this end is all the fresh juice stores. The thing is that there are 20 of them and they're all selling the same thing and they all want you to buy this from them. So I'll let Jacqueline do that. This lady caught my eyes. Uh, orange, mango, and Nine sold. They were all different prices. Some were seven. One was 20. I don't know what that was, but it's expensive. So when you come here, we had to ask. They have extracts, which is what we would consider fresh juice. Just just the juice from the fruits and vegetables and then here they also have juices but she said the juices always add water sugar and milk. all milk so basically this is a fresh juice and extract and this is a south american juice Glasses for us so that we didn't look how big it is. Fresh. Oh my god, that is so good. So we got mango, orange, and maracuya, which is like a passion fruit. Bueno, gracias. Like I was saying, it's so hard because every time someone walks in there and wants the juice, all of them offer a sort of same thing. They all wave the menu, so you're like, I oh, don't know, no, say no, yes, yes, no. Yes. So after two hours, three dishes, two coffees, a cake, a big juice, and plenty of little snacks, we spent in total 72 souls. Which is way more than you need to spend. We yeah. had like two huge lunches, we had coffee, cake, juice, chocolate, we bought snacks, like, Definitely don't need to spend that much, but it's you also so can. Worth it. Yeah, <laughs> so worth it. No regrets. All right, so we need to go for a walk and show you a bit more of Cusco because we need to walk off everything we just ate. <laughs> One minute later. Turns out we're not full enough yet. Caramel. Uh, Gracias. We literally just left the market and Max. You're never too full. Max bought the first thing he saw. <laughs> Okay, now it's time to walk off. No more eating for a little while. Yeah. We'll actually show you Cusco now. We just found another market. It's called the Artesanal, Ferreria Artesanal. So, artisanal market. And uh, it's way quieter, way more chill out. But there's not really any locals or any tourists here.
beautiful day, but we finally made our way to Plaza de Armas, which is the main historical square of the city. I guess the heart of Cusco. There's a ton of people here and it's actually just like a really beautiful center of Cusco. Actually everywhere, like the whole of Cusco, everywhere we've been walking today has had all these beautiful like colonial style gorgeous buildings. But here you can just really see it all around. And then right behind us over here is the Cusco Cathedral. So it's like the main uh, church here in Cusco. And all around pretty much the rest of the square is made up with restaurants so there's little shops along the bottom and then on the second floor are all these restaurants with these really cute little balconies there's like a cafe there obviously it's the main square so they're kind of more touristy more expensive restaurants so we haven't actually eaten in one yet um, but honestly, all the food that we've had in Cusco has been so good and so affordable. We don't feel that we need to go somewhere and spend a lot of money. This one is the Church of the Society of Jesus. So I'm not sure why there's two huge churches in the main square. It is so beautiful here in Cusco. So apart from like all the things that you can do, I think just like getting lost and just wandering around and enjoying your time here because the people are friendly. The scenery, the streets are so beautiful. It's one of those cities that you can take a couple of days just to rest in if you really wanted to. So we have moved over to the neighborhood next to where we're staying, which is the San Blas neighborhood. It's known as the bohemian, like trendy neighborhood. You'll find lots of really nice restaurants and stuff around here, but they'll also be a little bit more expensive than what we were paying in the market so keep that in mind we're going to a specific spot right now we'll show you when we get there but it is just like as you can see behind us a really beautiful name so what we're looking for here is the famous 12 angle stone basically in the Incan times they carved out a stone with 12 different angles which is incredibly complex and hard to do and so that's why it's so famous and so everyone comes here to look at this famous stone so now we have to go find it somewhere i guess in this wall this is the famous store here this is the famous store, the famous store, famous store. ah <laughs> the famous yeah. souvenirs <laughs> yeah. Nine, ten, eleven. Amazing. Bingo. So we've come to look at a colonial aqueduct, which still seems pretty popular, but not quite as popular as the twelve angled stone. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> but it's apparently really beautiful. I think you could probably get some really nice Instagram photos here. Let's go find out. Whoa, that's amazing. It's really pretty, huh? It's nothing like it's just a quick pit stop in your day, but it's just one of the things that add to Cusco's beauty. And like, I think I said it earlier, but just walking around is like a thing to do because Cusco is so beautiful especially with this like soft afternoon light it's so nice here so we've made our way to one of the most picturesque streets here in Cusco and it's also very famous on Instagram but Max is really rushing us because we're supposed to be making it to one of the miradors before sunset. Look how cute this is. It's very pretty. It's so nice. Pretty much gone because you uh, like Cusco is in a valley surrounded by mountains so I guess the sun sets a little bit earlier than we expected but it's still a beautiful view 
It's gorgeous sun on that side of Cusco over there. Beautiful mountains. We have a beer and another beer <laughs> for $4.50 each. And we have a snack of picarones for five so. Okay, I've been wanting to try these almost since we got to Peru when I found out about them, but I've just never seen them anywhere. So the first time seeing them, these are kind of like a Peruvian donut. The dough is made from, I want to say sweet potato, but I know it's either sweet potato or pumpkin, but I can't remember which one. And then they put this sweet sauce all over it. So. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so yummy. It's like a donut, but just like a fluffier, lighter donut. Like it's really fluffy and light, but the outside is super crunchy. Sante, my love. Cheers, guys. Perfect first day in Cusco. <laughs> people from another stunning day in Cusco. Today we are actually joining Peruvian cooking classes. We're gonna take a stab at cooking our own Peruvian food. I think it's been pretty clear in this vlog that we have absolutely loved Peruvian food. So learning how to cook some of the local cuisine ourselves is gonna be so much fun. We don't usually do cooking classes, but I think when you're in a country where the food is this good, learning some of those secrets is probably a good idea. Sí, y Jackie. Pedro, Hola, Pedro. Oh and look how cute this little kitchen is. So we're starting our food class. We're trying some local fruits, which we always love. It's always good to learn the actual names. This is a, a lucuma. Lucuma. Pepino. Pepino. make a pisco sour, you two ounces of pisco. One medium sweet potato, fresh corn, fish, and potatoes. Cool. Shopping list sorted. So we just went through the recipe and figured out what they already have in the kitchen and what we actually need to buy to make it. So he's given us some tote bites and it's time to go to the market. This is cumin, which is the most important in the dish. Chimu. We have pachotis. These stuffs are from the jungle, for example. It's called airampo. We have this nice uh, uh, potato you want to peel. Potato? It's so light. Oh, wow. So to the San Pedro market again. Today we're here to pick up the ingredients to make our recipes for tonight. Galax, the first thing. In these sections we can still find like uh, local grains from the Andes. You can find some uh, quinoas, you can find corn. We produce about 300 types of corn, 300 types of quinoa. Pete says that if you actually want to come to the market to eat, he doesn't recommend this market. He recommends the San Blas market. We haven't had a chance to get there, but if you do come to Cusco, take the locals' recommendation and go eat at San Blas, maybe. Did you count? No. There is a simple rule like this. Look, when potatoes are round and flat ones, that means it's a uh, watery, it's good for frying. The potatoes are round ones and with holes. This means are good for smashing, boiling. Okay, we got all of our groceries here from the market and now we are on our way back. It's time to cook some food, guys. I'm starting to get hungry. I love it, we get a chef's hat. Time to 
go from regular people to cookie style. <laughs> <laughs> So we haven't actually said this, but we're starting off with a pisco sour. Pisco, as you, if you've been watching our Peruvian vlogs, are is the local drink, wine, local like more like a spirit because it has such a high percentage. And so we're making the pisco sour. Is that shell? Yeah, it's good consistency. That's a lot of shell in there. Or bartender. Drumner, you made it with foam out. Like this! They were doing exactly the same. <laughs> oh, that was a proper workout. Fast, Jacqueline. Oh, that was short. Why am I short? I didn't oh, shake no. enough? You didn't shake it hard enough. I told you, Dang it! Hard. This is actually our first pisco sap. The whole time I've been in Peru. All right, time to get cooking now. Let's get cooking. Okay, so now we are going to be making some ceviche for our entree course. So we just sliced up some fish fillets. So for the ceviche, obviously some fish. Then we added lime juice, salt, pepper, chopped coriander, and chili. And Pete says that our ceviche should always be spicy, so we added a nice amount of chili. So on top of the ceviche, we're making a sauce on the side. We got the leftover little pieces of fish we chopped off. Like if you've got fresh fish, like straight caught from the sea that day, you only put it in the juice for five minutes and then it's ready. It is so quick and easy and so delicious. Just take the meat out and then this. Wow. Wow. So now we are making our main course, which is lomo sotado. So lomo sotado, if you don't know, is actually derived from the Chinese influence here in Peru. So it's kind of like an Asian stir fry with rice. so much going on in this kitchen. We're chopping things, things are being plated, things are over there cooking, cleaning. It's a lot. There's a lot going on for this meal. Yeah. Cooks the, uh, the milk. Uh -huh. You get milk fast, you get like big uh, uh, lumps. Yeah. Oh my God, that smells so good. Can you make that cheese? Oh, you drink this? Oh. This is very popular, just like the soup. Oh. Very, very fine, but we will ask for leche tigre. Leche tigre. Leche tigre. All right, we're drinking the uh, ceviche juice. Leche tigre. Salud. Mm. Wow. Ooh, that tastes so much better than I was expecting it to. So good. That is delicious. Mmm. Yum. Best kind of shots I do at my age. Uh, Would you want some of this butter? Don't necessarily. It's cold and delicious as well. Mm. Mm.
Wow. It looks so good. Well done. Yum. Oh, I no longer shifts. Yeah, but I think my hat is so cute. I love it. The best part of a cooking class is that not only are you getting the experience of learning about the traditional food, you also get to eat the meal you cook. So good. It's like a two for one. So we have our ceviche, our fresh ceviche. That is so good. That is delicious. Oh my god. I'm so glad we learned how to make this because now we're gonna go back to our families and we're gonna just so impress them with this delicious ceviche dish. Mm. Oh, this is so good. Amazing. Oh my god. How we, we cooked this? We made this meal. Oh my god. Well done. Tell me how good this is. And it's like as good as any meal that we've had in any restaurant here. Yeah. And we made it. Go us. I sliced this meat. <laughs> it is so nice here, honestly, having the cooking class. It's a really nice experience. I don't we've only ever done one other cooking class in Sri Lanka when we first started traveling and we did not even film it for YouTube. Yeah. That was a great cooking last day. It was amazing, but this is such a cool experience. I love that we get to learn about the food, make the food, and then eat the food. Mm -hmm. Dessert. Gracias. Wow, Did that was <laughs> delicious. So good. <laughs> so, Pete's cooking class also has a chocolate shop right next door, which I highly recommend visiting. So for dessert, as a part of the cooking class, they have given us some chocolate tapas. <laughs> so we tried these yesterday in the market, but these ones are like fresh from an artisanal chocolate shop. Heaven. Mm. What flavor? Just almond. Almond? Oh. Yes. Mm. Oh. Wow. Mm. Mamma mia. Oh my god. It's just perfect. Oh. Pisco sour. Heaven. Like a starter main course dessert. Mm. All your taste buds are satisfied. All local Peruvian food. Mm. Thank you to the amazing guys. It's not just the Let's chef, start. it's the sous chef and everyone. Mm -hmm. And the actual chef Pete. Thank and, uh, you so much. How do you make oh, it? Delicious. Yeah. Amazing. I can't Great. believe you cooked it. Yeah. Thank you so much. The chocolate as well at the end, perfect little touch. The chocolate. Yeah. Thank you so much, Peter. Definitely come and try Pete's cooking class. We will leave a link in the description below. Yeah, it was an amazing experience, delicious food, and go to the chocolate shop. It's so good. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, an amazing, amazing Great 48 hours. hours go. If you liked this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. It really helps small channels like ours grow. And I'll see you in the next time.